Bet365 sponsors the 59th Minute FPL podcast and they stream over 150,000 live sporting events every year, connecting you to every game that matters. Bet365 offers a wide range of markets, including first, last or anytime goal scorers. Download the app and see for yourself why it's the world's favourite online betting company. And with the Bet365 Bet Builder, you can create personalised bets and calculate the odds for any football match right there in your hands. Their app lets you watch thousands of games live, but if you can't watch it for any reason, you can stay in touch with instant match updates. Bet365 is the world's favourite online sport betting company. The app can be downloaded from Google Play and Apple App Store. Over 18s only, please gamble responsibly. The Athletic. Hi folks, welcome to another episode of the 59th Minute FPL Podcast, which is brought to you by The Athletic. I'm Mark McGettigan, you can find me on Twitter at FPL General. I'm recording late on Wednesday night ahead of Game Week 33. There's still one more game to go from Game Week 32, which is Leicester versus West Brom on Thursday evening. The Game Week 33 deadline is on Friday at 6.30pm UK time. It's a blank game week this week with just eight fixtures. Manchester City, Tottenham, Southampton and Fulham don't have a Premier League game this weekend due to the EFL Cup final on Sunday. It's been a crazy week for football with the Super League shenanigans, but thankfully it looks like we'll be playing FPL as we know it for the foreseeable future. It was a worrying few days to say the least. The headlines from Gimmick 32... Harry Kane scored a brace and picked up two bonus points against Everton, but he missed the second game of Tottenham's double game week due to injury. Josie Mourinho also missed the second game. Mason Greenwood and Gilfie Sigurdsson also scored twice in the game week. Trent Alexander-Arnold returned eight points despite Liverpool failing to keep a clean sheet against Leeds. Mohamed Salah was benched in that game. Wolves recorded their second clean sheet on the bounce, beating Sheffield United 1-0. West Ham lost to Newcastle, but that guy Jesse Lingard still managed to get on the score sheet, scoring from the penalty spot. Alexander Lacazette picked up an injury in Arsenal's 1-1 draw with Fulham, which will keep him out of their Game Week 33 fixture. Chelsea kept a clean sheet against Brighton, but frustratingly for myself and many others, Mendy and Azpilicueta were on the bench for that one. And on Wednesday night, John Stones was sent off as Manchester City beat Aston Villa 2-1. You can subscribe to The Athletic right now for a special price of £3.99 a month for six months. That's 40% off the full price of a subscription. You'll enjoy great analysis and in-depth features from the very best football writers around, as well as ad-free versions of all our podcasts. Simply visit theathletic.com forward slash FPL pod to take advantage of this special 40% discount. That's theathletic.com forward slash FPL pod. Just one shout out from Game Week 32. Welcome to the 59th Minute Club, Leandro Trossard. Just one point for the Belgian against Chelsea. Hopefully we'll get a few new members to the club between now and the end of the season. A quick review of Game Week 32. How's it going for me so far? I might just get my first green arrow, the one I've been waiting for for a long time. So my free transfer was Calvert-Lewin out for Ian Acho. So we'll see how Ian Acho does on Thursday night. Currently sitting on 64 points with Ian Acho to play. That's enough for a small green arrow at the moment from 33k to 29k. So as long as Ian Acho can do something, it should seal the green arrow. The good and the bad. The good was mainly defensively. Trent Alexander-Arnold with 8. Roman Saiz also with 8. Alonso got a very welcome clean sheet. And then the Spurs guy, Son, got the late goal for a 9-pointer. And Harry Kane, 24, as captain. The bad... Mendy, Azpilicueta and Forster no-show, so I've got a goalkeeper problem now. Also bad from Luke Shaw, Jota and Bruno, blanks from all three. So Shaw and Bruno in particular, I brought both of them in on the Game Week 30 wildcard and they've been very, very frustrating. Jota, I watched that Liverpool game, it was a, it was a tough watch. You know, once I seen Salah was benched, don't have him and Jota was in the starting eleven. I was hopeful I could get one over on the Salah owners, but it was it was a tough watch. 
Jota had so many chances. He was involved in almost everything Liverpool did going forward. It was just one of those nights where he couldn't turn it into FPL points. But hopefully he will do over the coming game week. So overall, pretty steady game week. Not a spectacular one, but hopefully it will be that first green arrow. uh, And hopefully the ship will be turned in the right direction now for the rest of the season. A quick watch list update. Players removed. Uh, removed Phillips from Liverpool. He's picked up an injury. And I'm probably going to be bringing in Mohamed Salah this week anyway. Which will bring me to three Liverpool players. So there won't be any space for Phillips in my team anytime soon. I've also removed Sochek. He's been a legend this season. But it's got to the point of the season now where I'm looking at... I want to bring in exciting players. So Sochek won't make the cut. If I buy a West Ham player, obviously it will be Jesse Lingard or Jared Bowen. Lacazette's been removed as well because of his injury. And I've also removed the two Burnley strikers, Chris Wood and Vidra. Again, it's got to the stage of the season where I want to buy exciting players. And buying a Burnley striker doesn't tickle my fancy at the moment. Players added to the watch list following Game Week 32. Rudiger from Chelsea. So I've got Mendy, Alonso, Azpilicueta. It's got to the point now where I feel like I've probably got too much cash invested in those three players. And if I was to lose, let's say, Alonso or Azpilicueta, I haven't ruled out just going sideways to Rudiger to free up a million quid. Rudiger seems pretty safe in the Chelsea back line. I've also added Connor Cody to my watch list. I've got Saiz. They've got two clean sheets in a row and they still have three or four decent fixtures coming up where I think they could keep more clean sheets. So I may double up on the Wolves' defence in the near future. That's why I've added Cody. Eight Nuri, the left-back, interests me there as well. Seeing him taking a couple of corners at the weekend, so that's promising. And finally, Gareth Bale is back on the watch list. Now that Mourinho's gone... I expected him to go straight in to the starting eleven under Ryan Mason, which he did. Got himself on the score sheet. So I think, obviously, no game in FPL this weekend for Spurs. But after that, Sheffield United in game week 34. So I think we'll see some people buy Gareth Bale for that one. And I definitely think he's an option again now. I expect him to start most games for the rest of the season. So that's the watch list updated ahead of game week 33. Before I get stuck into the Twitter questions, I want to let you know about a bonus 59th minute podcast episode, which will be released this Sunday. I recorded it with Sheffield United owner Prince Abdullah bin Mossad talking about all things FPL. Prince Abdullah is a very passionate FPL manager with four top 10k finishes. It's a really good listen, so make sure you subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss it on Sunday. Here's a short clip from it. Every smart league in the world should encourage people to play fantasy because it does magical three things. Number one, it makes every game in TV important to watch. Like if you don't play fantasy, you will not, not care about like, uh, I can't ever say Sheffield United. Like you can't say about Brighton playing uh, Fulham. <laughs> but I mean, now every game, even if you don't have players, some other people have players. So... It makes every game worth watching in TV. Number two, I think it more it gets you like more in love with the league because, like I know, I have a lot of my friends who used to be big uh, like AC Milan fans or Roma fans, or and w- w- when they w- were hooked with Premier League, now the, all they watch is Premier League over their like the favorite teams. And number three, I think it also make uh, it makes you like uh, look at the game objectively, like not not like uh, put your team first. Like if you if you're addicted to fantasy. You will just go with what you believe. Like if you're a United fan, you will hate Manchester City less if you play fantasy. Ben's 20-minute climb ride. I guess it's that kind of morning. What's up, Peloton? Get ready to tackle this first hill. Ready. With Peloton instructors right from your home. Build that power, Peloton. You have motivation that's ready when you are. Excellent work. If you've got more to give, join me on the map for a strength class. Bring it on, Ben. Nice work today, Peloton. Who's feeling stronger? Definitely me. Learn more at onepeloton.co.uk. Internet connection and separate all-access membership required. Thanks, as always, to everyone who sent in the questions on Twitter. First one this week comes in from Johnny. Got Mendy on wildcard. With Tuchel Roulette now in place, is it time to return to Martinez with our tails between our legs? 
Yeah, so on reflection, maybe we shouldn't have ever moved away from Martinez on wild cards. And I think if we are going to go back there, I think it probably is Martinez we go for. There's not too many goalkeepers that interest me at the moment. My situation, like a lot of people, I've got Mendy and Forster. Both of them didn't play the last game week. I'm probably going to play it out one more game week and hope that Mendy comes back in against West Ham. If he doesn't, and if Forster's also out of the team, um, you know, I'll probably I'm going to have to fix that next week. So I'm probably going to hold off until next week because I've I've got other things I want to do this week with my free transfer. So I'm just going to hope for the best with Mendy. But again, like I said, there's not too many goalkeepers that interest me at the moment. Leno seems to be gone as an option now as well because he didn't play. I don't think I've, I've ever remember a game week in FPL where three goalkeepers lost their place at the same time. So it'll be interesting to see if any of them can come back in next game week. So my initial thought is, yeah, natural. Just go from Mendy back to Martinez. You know, he'll have, he's got the extra fixture still to come as well, Martinez. So we know what he can do. Even when he doesn't keep clean sheets, he tends to rack up the save. So yeah, I think that's where I'll be going if I do need to fix that problem next week. Question from Blahavist91. Who's the best replacement for Lacazette now that he's injured? So most people have Kane and Ian Acho at this stage. So if you don't have those two, I think Vardy is an option. Even though he's pricey, Leicester still have some very good fixtures coming up. So I like the vardy Ian Acho double up. Obviously, you need a little bit of cash in the bank to be able to go from Lacazette to Vardy. The other options, similar price, Cavani, I like him. Yes, he was benched in the last game, but I would expect him to start most games between now and the end of the season. There's not many striker options. I think I've only got three strikers on my watch list at the moment, which tells you I'm not really interested in that position. I'd probably rather have five midfielders rather than three strikers at the moment. I think two strikers is enough. Uh, Bamford and Watkins I think are fine options as well Bamford's fixtures improve after the Manchester United game this weekend and Watkins has been ticking along since I sold him on the wild card I think he's returned in each of the three matches so he's still pretty good value so yeah I think it's it's Vardy, Iheanacho, Cavani or a midfielder I think you know I'd probably move to five in midfield rather than getting a third striker question from Saiz it ain't so Keep or sell Kane and why? So at the moment, with the information that we have at the time of recording, it sounds like Spurs are going to try and get Kane ready for the cup final on Sunday. His next FPL match is not until the 2nd of May, which is about 10 or 11 days away. So that's plenty of time, plenty of recovery time. Even if Kane isn't fit for the EFL cup final, he's got another week then until the Sheffield United fixture. So I'm inclined to keep him. There's a lot of reasons. We know he's been playing really well. He's a really good captaincy option, but the fixture is the big one. You're going to want to have Kane, if he's fit, for the captaincy in game week 34, because Manchester United play Liverpool that week. So that's, you know, that certainly puts me off the likes of Salah and Bruno for captaincy. So yeah, for me, Kane is a keep, unless we get concrete information before this week's deadline that he's going to be out for a couple of weeks because at the moment we haven't had that looks like I think Ryan Mason said they're hoping to have him on the training pitches at the end of this week so Thursday or Friday or possibly even Saturday before Sunday's game so yeah unless there's anything new on Kane I think you keep him next question is from Chris with Josie Mourinho gone would you hold on to Son in the hope of a more attacking philosophy from a team with lots of obvious attacking talent. So, yeah, I definitely do think I'd be more inclined to hold on to Son now. Obviously, he doesn't play this week, but if you can if you can bench him and get a strong 11 out this week, I probably would do that. My plan this week was always to get rid of Son to get Salah. You know, I left cash in the bank for that. Pretty sure I'm going to go through with that move. But if that wasn't my plan, you know, let's say I already had Salah, I probably would hold on to Sun now for those fixtures after the blank game week for Spurs. Uh, it was good to see him on the score sheet, and he had he had one ruled out quite you know it was a very close call uh, as well for offside. So it could have been a brace for Sun in that game. So I'm more hot on Sun now that Mourinho has gone than I was you know let let's say this time last week. So yeah, I think you could have a good end to the season. 
Question from FPL Sponge. If you still had your free hit, would you play it this week or save it for potential blank and double game weeks down the line? For context, I had planned to use it in game week 33 with Kane, Son, Diaz out and high potential fixtures with treble up options for the likes of Brighton, Liverpool, Leicester, Man United and Aston Villa. So yeah, I had a look at the fixtures and they are the, the fixtures do look quite nice this weekend if you still have your free hit chip. So I think this week is as good as any time to do it, particularly if you're struggling. Let's say you're struggling to get 9 or 10 players out this week if you've got a couple injuries on top of the Spurs and Manchester City players not playing. I think it's absolutely fine to play your free hit this week. Uh, again, very team dependent. Depends on your current setup for this weekend. If you're already strong for the weekend and you're confident of a good score, then of course you can hold off for these potential blanks and doubles that are coming. It could be much easier to navigate those with a free hit chip. So again, team dependent, but certainly the fixtures for those teams that FPL Sponge mentioned, I would be very tempted to just go ahead this week and use it. Question from Matthias Amon. There seems to be a definite template in the front seven or eight at the moment. Which of the template players can we get rid of? And who are their replacement differentials, particularly if we want to make up ground in the mini leagues? So, a couple of players who are part of the template at the moment who I think are sellable. Bruno Fernandes hasn't been doing much recently. If you're not going to captain him, I think you can spread the cash around instead. Diego Jota, you know, I mentioned he should have had plenty of FPL points against Leeds, but he came away with a blank. I don't think Jota's essential either because... There probably will be the odd time he's on the bench. And Youngman's son, who is in a lot of teams at the moment, some people will keep him. Um, I think most people will probably sell him this week, particularly if they don't have a Salah or maybe even a Bruno. Some people will go son to Bruno this week. So there's three straight off the bat. Bruno, Jota and Son, who I think you can let go. I don't think those three are essential at the moment. Looking at possible replacements for those midfielders, I've thrown in a few strikers here as well for those looking to make up ground. I've mentioned quite a few of these for the last couple of game weeks and most of them I think are still very good differential options. Not just for those looking to make up ground either. If you're sitting top of your mini league or you're sitting you know, top 10k or top 100k in the rankings, these are good players to own as well for the run-in. James Madison at Leicester, 5.9%. Yes, he didn't start the last game, but he will be starting games soon, you would imagine. Mason Greenwood is on fire. I think it's four goals in his last four, maybe even four in his last three. He's still owned by just 3.1% of managers. If I was, If I had no Manchester United players at the moment he would be the first one I would buy. I would buy him over Bruno Fernandes or Cavani. I think Greenwood at the you know, at, at the moment is the best Manchester United asset to own. Jared Bowen at West Ham. Most people already have Jesse Lingard. I still like the, the Lingard Bowen double up. Or if you're like me and you and you, you don't have Lingard, you could go to Bowen instead and hope that he outscores him. He's just two point nine percent owned. Sadio Mane, the forgotten man of FPL, got him first goal for a while against Leeds. Ownership crazy low, 4.9%. I think Manny's one of the best differentials if you're really chasing, if you're way behind in your mini league, you can bring in Manny and, and possibly captain him in some game weeks. Yes, there's risk involved. He could be on the bench from time to time like Jota could be. Um, but yeah, that ownership is extremely low. It'll probably never be that low again. Triori at Wolves, 5.6%. Attack returns in each of his last three fixtures. And Wolves still have a couple of good fixtures to come, so I like him as well. Cavani's at 3.4%, so extremely low. Like him as well. Vardy, I've mentioned him here, even though his ownership is nowhere near as low as the others. His ownership is just under 20% at the moment. But you'll probably find in some of your mini leagues that Vardy probably will be a differential particularly for those who have Harry Kane. It's quite hard to fit Kane and Vardy up front. So if you look around some of the teams of your rivals, you might find that Vardy's not in many of them. And in that case, you might be more inclined to go for him. And he's, he's even a captaincy option for this coming game week. And then there's the Chelsea guys. But I'll put question marks beside all of them. You've got Havertz, Pulisic and Mason Mount. They're all differentials, but they come with a health warning because Tuchel as we know, is now worse, I think, than Pep Guardiola ever was 
for rotating players, even does it to his goalkeeper. So, yeah, that scares me off the Chelsea guy. So I think I'd rather, you know, someone like a Greenwood, even a Jared Bowen or a Madison, rather than the Chelsea guys at the moment. But there's plenty of differential options out there for us to choose from at the moment. Question from Stephen. Who should our third striker be? Presuming everyone is on Kane and Ianacho already. So I've probably covered this already in a previous question. I think Vardy would be my preference at the moment for the third striker spot, if you've already got those two, or a midfielder. So yeah, I'd probably move to 3-5-2. Um, again, like I said, I think if you've got Bamford or Watkins already, I think they're fine. They're probably even fine to bring in if you've got faith in them to do well over the next couple of game weeks. But yeah, I think Kane, Vardy, Ianacho is the front three that I would like to have for the next couple of game weeks. Question from Anthony. Who are the best defenders going forward, taking into consideration the potential double and blank? So just had a quick look at my team and my watch list. And I think the top five defenders to own at the moment for me would be Trent number one. I would still put Dallas in my top five. I would have a Wolves defender in there. So I don't think it matters too much whether you have Cody or Saiz or even Eight Nuri now. I think he's pretty secure as well. So any one of those guys... Uh, Rudiger, I think I would have. I think he would be my pick from the Chelsea defence now, just because he's the cheapest and seems to be the most secure. Although secure is not in Thomas Tuchel's dictionary, it seems. And the fifth name I'm throwing in here is Rob Holding. Uh, yes, didn't get a clean sheet in the last game, but just for value, you know, we all we're always looking for cheap enablers in our 15 I think Rob Holding at the moment offers very good value even if it's just as a bench player so there's five defenders to think about question from FPL Matcha are you finally bringing in Lingard the answer is no and it's not because I'm stubborn I've said it all along he's a great pick he should be in the team by now but I've just got a lot of issues I've got goalkeeper issues now um, I want to get Salah in this week to captain him at the weekend. So to get Lingard again for me this week, like it has been for the last few weeks, is a minus four. And it's the fixture this week. It's against Chelsea. So I'm going to back Chelsea to keep Lingard quiet. And then maybe, just maybe, I'll bring him in in game week 34. But yes, it's going to be another weekend of no Lingard for me. It was funny. I was out... I was out during the West Ham game last weekend, myself and my wife, and the dog went for a nice walk. And even though I left my phone at home, lovely surroundings, lovely day, all I could think about was, has he scored? Has he scored? And of course, I think when I left, it was it was 3-0. And I, and I thought, great, he's not going to do any damage to me this week. And of course, by the time I got home, his, he was on the score sheet. So hopefully the same won't happen against Chelsea. Question from FPL Teabag. What are your strategies for the potential double and blank game week? So yeah, I haven't really covered these blanks and double game weeks too much on the podcast recently for a couple of reasons. Number one, because nothing's confirmed yet. And number two, because I don't have a wild card or any chips, it doesn't really change things for me too much. So I just noted down a few things here. I've got no chips and I've got no wild card, so I haven't really thought about it too much as it won't affect my team as much as it will others. The fixtures will just move around a bit, but the players will still have the same number of games. I'm not giving it too much thought until it's confirmed. So basically what I'm saying there is, you know, it looks like we're going to get, I think it's a double game week 35, and then the teams that have a double in 35 will have a blank in 36. So for people like me who've got no chips or no wild card, it doesn't make much of a difference. Your players are still going to have a game. It just might mean they have two games in 35 and no game in 36. They still have two games over the two game weeks. That's the way I'm looking at it. Obviously, it's different if you've got free hits, wild cards, bench boosts. Um, but again, I've just been playing the game week in front of me and I'm not going to you know, think about my strategy or my plans or my transfers for those game weeks until I see exactly what they are. As always, best thing to do, follow Ben Crellin on Twitter. He shared today what he thinks the schedule is going to look like. So for those managers in particular who still have chips and wildcards, go have a look at Ben's predicted schedule because he's usually bang on with those predictions. Game week 33 captaincy now. I think the standard option is Mohamed Salah at home to Newcastle after his benching against Leeds. 
So he's my priority for a transfer in this week and he will get the captain's armband. If you've got Jota, Manny, Trent, Alexander-Arnold, I think they're options as well. But I just feel, particularly when it comes to Salah versus Jota versus Manny, to me Salah is the safest option this week given that he was rested in the last game. And of course he's got the penalties as well. I think Trent is a pretty good captaincy option this week for those who don't mind captain and defenders. Other options... Leicester have probably the best fixture of the game week. They're at home to Crystal Palace. So Ian Acho and Vardy, I think, are very good captaincy options for the game week as well. Bruno Fernandes plays Leeds. Now, if we looked at Bruno Fernandes versus Leeds about two months ago, we would have said, yes, that's the best captain of the game week. But Leeds have improved a lot defensively in recent weeks. They haven't conceded more than once in their last five games. And that includes fixtures against Liverpool, Manchester City and Chelsea. So Bruno is not in my captaincy thoughts for this game week. I would rather captain Greenwood if I had him over Bruno at the moment. So for me, it's either, I think, Salah or Ian Acho. I think they were, those are probably the two standout captaincy options for game week 34. I think I'll be on Salah and I'll put Ian Acho as my vice captain. Transfers for Game Week 33, mentioned this already. I'm going to follow through with my plan, bring in Mohamed Salah for Youngman's son. I've got the cash in the bank to do so. I've got a goalkeeper problem. Do I want to take a minus four to fix it this week? Not really. I'm just going to hope for the best that Tuchel continues to rotate and brings Mendy back in for the West Ham game. If he doesn't, if it's still a problem next week, I will fix it then. I do think though, and maybe I'll weigh this up, on Friday a minus four for Martinez from Mendy I don't think is the craziest idea when Martinez has West Brom this weekend so basically if you're taking the minus four this week you're hoping that Mendy doesn't get his place back and you're hoping that Martinez starts and gets a clean sheet or at least a couple of saves against West Brom if he doesn't keep a clean sheet so I think some people will do that they'll go Mendy to Martinez minus four I do think that's okay, so it's something I need to think about myself, but unlikely I'll do it. I'll probably wait till next week to fix the goalkeeper problem. The only other transfer I was thinking about was possibly Harry Kane out for Jamie Vardy for a minus four, but that would only be if Kane, if we got some new information, that Kane was going to be out long term, which at the moment we don't have, and if we don't have that before the deadline... I'll just hold on to Kane with that Chef United fixture for the captaincy in mind for Game Week 34. That's it for the Game Week 33 preview. Thank you for listening, folks. Please give it a share on Twitter if you enjoyed it and leave a review on whatever platform you're using to listen. If you'd like to hear more podcasts from me and support me as a full-time fantasy manager, check out patreon.com forward slash FPL general. Best of luck for Game Week 33. Keep an eye out for Sunday's bonus episode and I'll talk to you again on Tuesday. The Athletic.